Mandates have come back. Kyrie is officially, officially allowed to play home, home games. And my question is, because last night they, they um, you know, they combined for like 74 points, him and KD. However, they couldn't beat the jawless, <laughs> jawless uh, Memphis Grizzlies. Because I think uh, those uh, Memphis Grizzlies without jaw beat them by like 12 or 10 or 12 points. But my question to you guys is, do they actually need Ben Simmons? And I don't, uh, I don't know. It's it's tough to call because they they were without Seth Curry. Um, they're not going to get Joe Harris back anytime soon. So I don't think they do. Like I, you know, it's just uh, he's just a liability when it comes to uh, shooting, right? Like uh, he could force double teams or like. People could double team Kyrie, knowing that Ben Chip, Ben Simmons can't shoot. But then again, who knows? He can, or he might. Right? I don't know, hundred percent. But uh, yeah, it's it's quite the dilemma for the Brooklyn Nets. But an update on Ben Simmons is he did receive an epidermal shot in his back, and he is expected to play sometime this season well there's like eight games left so which game will he play and um you just have to think to yourself is this herniated disc a major problem so you know um check this clip out from uh, first take this morning uh just now and basically you guys be the judge because <sighs> I know he's a great defender, but uh, can they with, win without him? Can the Nets win the East without Ben Simmons? You, you see, you see, Stephen A., when you say you're the Magic Johnson of the show, with a take like that, you make me believe that you're the Kendrick Perkins of the show, the Kendrick <laughs> Perkins of the play, okay? So you go from Magic to Kendrick Perkins. That's one thing. Listen, here's the thing. I've, look. Kyrie and Kevin Durant, they are box office together. I understand that. Offensively, when, when you talk about getting buckets, you talk about one of the most skilled duos to ever play the game, I get all that. But at the end of the day, we keep forgetting one thing. Defense win championships. And as I, as I talked about earlier, Kyrie Irving had 43. Kevin Durant had 35. They scored 125, 120 points, and they lost. Why? Because they don't have a defensive presence. De Andre uh, Drummond, he can't guard a pick and roll to save his life. I don't know what's going on with Speedy Claxton, I mean, uh, 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 Claxton kid. But listen, here's the thing. My biggest concern about the Nets is when that ball is not falling in the basket, you're going to have to get stops. You're going to have to have in-game adjustments. And I, me personally, I don't trust Steve Nash. He, he has given me no reason to trust him. KD and Kyrie has bailed them out every single time with historical performances. Until I can see Steve Nash make in-game adjustments, which he's going to have to do, especially in the Eastern Conference this year, going against guys like Eric Sposha, you know, Doc Rivers, guys to that nature, I can't see the Nets come winning the East, especially without Ben Simmons. I can't. I'm not guaranteeing it. We got to see it, but I can't. Let me tell you something, man. <clears throat> Defense wins championships, but offense wins games. And when you've got a prolific offense, which they have when Kyrie and KD are on the floor together, it takes a Memphis to take them out, okay? I'm talking about the Eastern Conference. I ain't talking the title now. I'm talking about the Eastern Conference. When I look at the Eastern Conference, I'm going to go on the record and say something. <clears throat> yes, I'm Knicks first, New York always. 
the exceptions to the rule are when I take my, 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 my social life into consideration and then suddenly I root for Miami and L.A. I'm not apologizing for it. It's just my life. It's just what I root for, ladies and gentlemen. It's my dream scenario. And one of the most bitter memories I've ever had in my life was when the bubble was taking place and the finals consisted of Miami and L.A. I waited my entire career, Kendrick Perkins, to be able to cover an <laughs> NBA Finals with Miami and L.A. in June, and it happens when no fans are allowed and everybody's stuck in the bubble, and I, 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 I can't believe it, okay? Having said all of that, let me be very, very clear about where I'm going with this. There's only one team in the Eastern Conference right now that wants any part of Brooklyn with KD and Kyrie on the floor, and that would happen to be the Boston Celtics. Nobody else really wants them. They'll show up. They'll take it. Milwaukee could beat Brooklyn. Miami could beat Brooklyn. But if you think for one second that them brothers ain't a little bit nervous about the thought of going up against KD and Kyrie, you got another thing coming. Because these brothers together are explosive. And I'm telling you right now, Seth Curry has elevated his level of play to a point where we all need to be taking notice about what this young brother is capable of. Drummond has mass and girth, and he helps buffer the offensive line. Claxton and Jones are role players, nonetheless, along with Blake Griffin, who forgot how to dunk when he was in Detroit and then learned again once he got back to Brooklyn. But that's neither here nor there. The point is that when you look at the supplementary parts, the personnel, surrounding a healthy Kyrie and KD. You cannot summarily dismiss that. These brothers are both champions for a reason. They know what it takes. When you look at all the other teams, definitively speaking, who is your closer when it really, really counts? With Philadelphia, you hope it's going to be Harden. It has to be Embiid. With Milwaukee, yeah, Giannis, but the perimeter shot is suspect, along with the free throw shooting, even though he's made more free throw. He's made his free throws in the past, and he's overcome some of those doldrums. Miami is no joke. They seem perfectly suited to knock off Brooklyn. I get that. But we see from time to time how they ebb and flow like a roller coaster. We know what they're capable of. I'm not questioning it. What I'm questioning is the level of consistency, which obviously Eric Spolster was questioning as well based on what we saw the other night, okay? So to me, I look at Brooklyn, and Boston would be the team that I would tell you is in a position to say bring all that smoke. We ready for it? But I'm telling you, Brooklyn right now, even without KD, can challenge and possibly could win the Eastern Conference because their offense is that prolific. The games will be close, and it will come down to moments. And when moments arrive, I'd bet my money on Kyrie or KD. Well, well Stephen, I need to ask you something. Would you bet your money on Steve Nash? Would you no. bet your money on Steve Nash? No. Okay, okay, so that's my point. When we talk about, when we get down to the nitty-gritty, when we get mm -hmm. down to the scout report, when we mm -hmm. get down to those in-game adjustments, making mm -hmm. adjustments at halftime, making adjustments on the fly, defensive schemes, offensive schemes, because it's, it's going to become a point of time where rotations matter. It's going to come a point of time where teams are going to start doubling Kyrie and KD as soon as they and touch blitzing. the ball. Yep. Do you have faith? Do you have faith in Bruce Brown? Can I answer that? Do you have faith in God? Yeah, go ahead. Well first, well, first of all, first of all, I do have some faith in Bruce Brown. I do have some faith in Seth Curry. I do have some faith in some of those guys. That's number one. But number two, I want to throw this because I want to ask you this question before we get out of this segment. <clears throat> Steve Nash, is he a better coach now than he was last season? I haven't seen. I mean, he haven't showed me nothing to, I thought, to I think, make I think me he's a little bit better. He is. I think. I think a, a little experience. I think he's a little better than last season. What I would say to you is this, KP: If Kevin Durant is wearing a size twelve instead of a size thirteen, Brooklyn's yeah. in the conference finals, and probably is is going to the finals. So yeah, can they win without him? I. I think they can because KD is on another level. So is Kyrie. And I personally don't even think they need Ben Simmons. I really don't. Uh, they needed uh, a win last night, but it's just the regular season, right? Like, I personally do not think they need Ben Simmons just because those two guys themselves are in their prime. Those two guys them themselves are fully healthy. Those two guys themselves are um 
legit, right? Combined for 74 points, all you need is a healthy Seth Curry, uh, healthy Dream or uh, Andre Drummond, and you got yourself a ball club. Once you're next to KD and Kyrie, every, everything just flows together. So tell me what you guys think. Do the Brooklyn Nets need Ben Simmons? Jag from Jaggy Sports.